Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, while some of my younger viewers were eagerly anticipating consuming their Halloween treats, I was waiting for a different kind of treat. This is the onboard engineering camera footage from Soyuz MS-10. This was published by Roscosmos this morning in association with the release of the official report into the MS-10 failure. I'm going to say it is pretty spectacular to watch this rocket rise up from Baikonur and look out across the, the plains and see all these uh, facilities that have such you know historic importance to the development of space travel. It is surprisingly low quality, but I guess it does what it's supposed to. It's a 640 by 360 at 24 frames per second, which I find interesting because that's a frame rate usually associated with film, whereas this is clearly recorded on an electronic sensor. In fact, I think it's not a great electronic sensor because I'm seeing rolling shutter in many of the frames later on. But look, at this point, the launch has been perfectly normal. We have to fast forward 218 seconds to when stage separation happens. And it happens really quickly. Watch the booster on the left, bang. It just falls apart very quickly, and then, of course, the crew escapes. Now I'm going to do that lame thing where I just play the video slower and slower. Here it is at one quarter speed. Watch the booster on the left and compare it to the other two. We had the black burst of smoke of stage separation. And yeah, you see that the one on the left did not detach correctly. Now the whole booster spins out of control in a cloud of oxygen. And of course, a few seconds later, the automatic abort system kicks in, shuts down the engine, and the crew capsule is pulled away. Okay, one more time with feeling. So watch the boost, the bolts kick in. Those will detach the boosters from the bottom. The engines will continue to thrust, pushing the bottom of the engines outwards from the main ro rocket body. As they get far enough out, sensor kicks in that shuts down the engines and lets oxygen run through a valve at the top, which pushes the top away. However, the one on the left, this doesn't happen because the sensor is broken. If you look at the center booster, you can see the black spot where the oxygen vent is. Now, you can't actually see the oxygen coming out of that because it's in gas form. But normally during a launch, as these flip around upside down, the oxygen uh, liquid is, you know, pushed up to the top of the booster and then comes out and you see a cloud pushing these away. Meanwhile, the booster on the left is still resolutely hanging there without the oxygen thrust to push it away. So while its buddies are going to go off and do its own thing, it is going to stick around, and it's really not designed to stick around here. Now, the video seems to kind of, I don't know, I think it skips a bit here to show some detail, but what we see is this um, you know, cloud of uh, exhaust gases running up the side of the rocket. I don't think this is an explosion, but what we do see in these frames is the rocket looks damaged. You can actually see stuff hanging out the side. So as I understand it, the booster tore a gash in the side of the booster, which then of course started venting a huge amount of propellant all over the place. And at this point, the structural integrity of the booster is compromised, so the whole thing starts to break up. And uh, of course, what's really triggering the emergency abort system is the fact that the booster is now pointing off axis. Okay, so the official timeline of events is 118 seconds is when staging happens, 121.57 is when the emergency engine abort uh, shutdown was triggered, so the engine shut down, plus you know, 0.05 seconds is when the abort system actually pulled the crew capsule away, uh, plus 0.24 is when the second set of engines on the uh, crew capsule pulled them even faster away, I guess, and 37 seconds after that, the crew uh, capsule was released from the fairing and it fell down towards the surface, whereupon it, of course, experienced a 7G deceleration due to uh, aerodynamic forces and landed after 19 minutes, 49 seconds. One number I have seen missing from this is that the official altitude that it reached at Apogee, which is about 93 kilometers. Now, 100 kilometers is what's considered to be space for most of the world. That's the altitude that astronauts get their astronaut wings. But in the US, uh, X-15 pilots that reached 50 miles were able to get their astronaut wings. And that might mean that Nick Haig actually qualifies for his astronaut wings, according to US rules. Anyway, there was a commission report, which was mostly these guys sitting around talking Russian with barely able to see any of the graphics. But 
Uh, I don't speak Russian, but thankfully there are other space people out there that do that. Anatoly Zak of uh, Russian Space Web, he's always the best guy to go to for, um, you know, reports on Russian technology or whatever. And also, also Katya Pavlushenko, I think is that that's her name. She was commenting on Twitter with all sorts of fascinating details. But the most important thing to see from this whole thing is they track down all the debris from the rocket because it's uh, the planes in Kazakhstan, all the stuff falls down. So they were able to find the booster, which was attached and stayed attached, and uh, ended up ra looking rather nice when it landed on the ground. What they're focusing on here is the ball joint at the tip of the booster. And very specifically, you'll see in the middle there is a pin. They say that this pin was part of a sensor system that was supposed to activate the oxygen valve. However, during assembly, it was bent by 6 degrees and 45 minutes, almost 7 degrees. With that pin bent, it was unable to move out and therefore the sensor was unable to trip, so the booster didn't end up detaching correctly. The damage has been attributed to non-standard assembly procedures at the plant, and uh, Roscosmos has made a point of saying that they're going to take all the boosters that they have already assembled and pull them apart to make sure this isn't happening. There are uh, three more launches at least coming up before the space station launch in December, which will be in early December to give them more overlap than they otherwise would have. So at least this particular failure will have been prevented. Uh, they did also point out there's been issues with insurance because normally they would wait until the last minute to buy the insurance. Now, of course, they're facing higher insurance rates. Uh, they stress that there are only five more Soyuz FG rockets that are going to launch in all in 2019. After that, it's going to be the Soyuz 21A, which is a completely different upper stage design. So I'm not sure if there's any other details I've missed. It was obviously all in Russian. I don't speak Russian, but it seems that our initial reports have been confirmed. We've got some cool new footage of our, uh, the Soyuz staging. And yes, the Soyuz launch schedule will continue as planned. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.